So in this video, we're going to take a look at working with the surface constraint. Now, as you see what I have here, I have this little teapot rolling along this squished sphere. And this is just another one of the constraints that we can use. So let's go ahead and see how we can create this kind of effect in a fairly easy manner. So I'm going to go ahead and go File, Reset. Don't save, reset, all of that. So this is going to be pretty simple overall. First off, I'm going to go sphere, and I'm just going to make a big old sphere. From here, I'm going to press the letter R to switch up to my scale, like I have up here, and I'm just going to squish it down in the Z. Now I'm going to turn on edged faces just so it's easier to see everything in here. But once I have this, now I need the object that I want to move. So, let's go with that handy dandy simple little teapot. Well, just like the other constraints, they're found up here under animation. So, with it selected, animation, constraint, and this time, surface constraint. Choose the object, and I choose that one. So, as before, we kind of got some new options. Well, if we look at where it is, the teapot's down there. Well, some of it has to do with the object that we create. In this case, the way the sphere is built and its centers and everything, we have to do a few things just to kind of help this out. Well, first off, we have these options over here, the U and the V position. What we want to do is this, align to U, and I'm going to move up the V position here until I get it placed about right onto this object. Okay. Well, if it was upside down right now, I could click flip down here just to move it however I need it to do. But I'm going to leave it like this because I actually want to be able to, you know, see it. Okay. So that leaves this, the U position. Well, similar to what we have before, we have the ability to move this based on a 0 to 100 scale, which, I mean, obviously, you can go to 300, but the main point is, to animate this thing, I'm going to start at 0, Auto key, move the timeline to the end, I'm going to set this to 100. So what that means is, when I hit play, it's going to make one full cycle. Now, if instead, at the end of it, I had chosen, you know, 500, well, that means it's going to make five rounds real, real quick. But we had talked about looping animation last time, and we will continue to talk about it. But I'm going to set this back to 100, but I also want to smooth this out. So, hit my gear. Reset the time. I'll say to 300 to give me 10 seconds. Actually, let me undo that. End time is 100. Rescale to 300. There we go. So now... Oh, I didn't save what I wanted to do. Let me fix that. 300. Okay. Okay. Hit play, and now we get something that's much more smooth and much nicer. Well, we still have that problem of, you know, the slow start, the speed up, and then slow stop. So, just like we have other things, I'm going to turn off Auto Key, open up my Curve Editor, choose those, and hit this to make it a linear input and output, which now makes it just a constant, steady, moving thing going around. That said, this is a great way that if you set up a little scene, you can easily just kind of loop around it like this. If you wanted to make one of those, say, little Christmas town displays that have the little people skating 
or the car going around a track, or anything kind of like that, and this is a great way to go about that. But that's the surface constraint, that's all for this one, and I'll see you in the next one.